Hola YouTube and welcome back to my channel. I am your girl Beauty Balanoria across all my social media platforms. I am going to do my let's talk while I'm getting ready just to go ahead and talk over a few things with you guys. Um, this was supposed to be my first video back from my, I think I missed like two, three weeks of uploads. This, so this was supposed to go up before my Tati James Charles drama video. This was supposed to go up that day. I was literally editing this video the day all of that popped off on social media. But I'll just decide this video kind of might get a little heavy. Kind of is. We definitely finna talk in this video. So if you're ready, then let's go ahead and keep watching. You're my video taking me home. So we're going to go ahead and start talking this chit chat and get ready with me as I'm busy getting dressed. Before I start telling my story, I'm going to be using the Iconic London. This is their Sculpt and Boost eyeshadow cushion. And this is the shade Medium that came in our BoxyCharm Luxe. So you guys remember it looks like this and you open it up and it has a split pan. So I'm going to be going in with my e.l.f. Precision brush to actually go ahead and do my eyebrows but while I'm busy doing this I'm gonna go ahead and talk to you guys about where I've been what's been going on and then we're just gonna start uh, talking about the news and what's been going on lately in the news and what the heck is going on but I already have my eyebrows and eyelids primed with the Smash, Smashbox 24-hour eyeshadow primer so we're gonna go ahead and go in I'm gonna go ahead and go into a lot of pigment comes off on this but I'm gonna go ahead and go into the darker one and actually outline my brows while I'm busy talking to you guys but anyway let's go ahead and get the obvious out the way first Lynn where have you been what's been going on for some of you guys that follow me on my Instagram then you already know <laughs> and of course from the title of this video that I had to have emergency surgery uh, oral surgery um, what happened? Well, let me go ahead and just insert a video of the ridiculousness that happened so that way you can understand where my insecurities with the situation came from. But, you know, if you guys aren't, you know, big on looking at surgical procedures or the aftermath of a surgical procedure, go ahead and fast forward this video 12 seconds right now so this way you aren't triggered. But for you guys who don't have a problem with it, I'm going to insert the clip now. So basically what happened was it was a Friday around hmm, 11.30 a.m. And this had to be what, the 15th of April, something like that. It was right there within that time frame, right? Now you guys know I've been busy getting over the whole pollen situation, which really caused me to have really itchy eyes, really watery eyes. My eyes would be swollen when I would wake up, different things like that. So I didn't quite stick to my filming schedule. And I explained that to you guys in the earlier video. The last video I put up was how to do your makeup when you're sick and not feeling well. Well, little did I know something else was in store for me. So basically <clears throat> what happened was about 11.30 that morning, my husband and I, we were sitting in bed watching movies and we ordered Postmates. Um, just Jersey Mike subs, you know, nothing like too crazy or out there. It wasn't like I was eating nuts or whatever. Anyway, I was eating my sandwich and I cracked my tooth. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell? Anyway, so I wasn't really in pain when it first happened. So I didn't actually, you know, go back in and, you know, do anything else additional. Because I was like, okay, I'll just make a dentist appointment. No biggie, right? So after I finished eating, I didn't even first, let me go ahead and say, I didn't even realize I had cracked my wisdom tooth in the back. So we're sitting there, you know, watching movies, finishing eating or whatever. You know, I tell them, hey, you know, something just happened. I don't know what happened, but I'm not in any pain. So we didn't really think twice about it. 
Well, you know, long story short, as the time started to progress, I went ahead and went to sleep. I went to sleep about, I want to say maybe 12.30. Uh, I was woken up out of my sleep about 2 o'clock in the afternoon with a severe pain. When I say a severe pain, like that pain was just <laughs> too crazy for me. It jolted me out of my sleep. Long story short, I knew something was wrong and I needed to get to a dentist ASAP. I knew from the way I was feeling and the pain that I was having that, hey, Lynn, you need to get to a dentist like right away. Like there isn't anything else that's going to happen that you need to get to a dentist. So I started calling dentists and dentists. And the problem with that is I'm making emergency calls to dentists at two o'clock on a Friday. I don't know how it is in your city and state, but in Metro Atlanta, they're like, girl, boo bye. You better make an appointment for next week. We are ready to go. I own our bot I own on our bots and <laughs> boats and enjoy our weekend. So basically, what happened was I couldn't get a dentist and I started looking at uh Saturday dentists uh dentists for here in Metro Atlanta. And they weren't really any better with the whole situation because even though they say they had Saturday practices, I couldn't find anybody that could see me prior to Monday. So this is what starts off being the crazy situation that happened. So basically, I'm sitting up here trying to get a dentist to see me prior to Monday because of the pain I'm in. And I'm taking like my goodies and some relief to kind of alleviate the pain and it's not really working but i'm still trying i'm still trying so i make an appointment for monday to see one doctor that is about 20 miles away from me 20 25 miles away from me here in metro Atlanta. that's not really a big thing to be honest with you uh so what happens is i try to roll over and go back to sleep it's four o'clock and I'm already saying, hey, I'm not feeling well. And my husband is already like, well, if you truly aren't feeling well, you may just want to go to the emergency room and try to see what they can do to assist you. At that time, one of the doctors I had called and left a voicemail for, he called me back on his after hours number. And he told me he couldn't do anything for me um, that Saturday. But what I could do was I could go ahead and come into his office. Saturday morning at 8 a.m. and he can write me a prescription for pain until I'm able to try to go to an oral surgeon based on what he said with the crack and everything and where it was. He said it sounds like it was one of my wisdom teeth and he can't do anything with that. I need to go to an oral surgeon. Now all the other doctors I called who staff actually answered the phone, they were saying the same thing as well. So I pretty much knew I wasn't going to be able to see just a regular dentist for my particular situation. Uh, I had no idea that dentistry had changed like that. I thought all oh, dentists could just take care of and handle stuff. Boy, was I wrong. So I was like, oh yeah, okay, fine, cool, whatever. I'll make an appointment to go see him tomorrow morning. I could go ahead and just tough it out through the night, and I'll just go see this guy tomorrow morning. Not a big problem, right? Or so I thought. Long story short, I got out phone with him about 4.30 to see him the next morning at 8 a.m. Child, I didn't make it. About 20, 25 minutes later, the pain was so severe. My um, goodie powders and my Aleve was no longer working. So at this point, I just went ahead and made a decision. I'm going to go ahead and do my um, primer on my face. I'm going to go ahead and use the Cover FX. This is their gripping primer. And on my cheeks and nose, I'm going to go ahead and use the e.l.f. Poreless Primer. So before I started cleaning up my eyebrows. So anyway, as this whole situation is progressing and happening, I make a decision that I'm going to go ahead and drive up to the emergency room. Like something is wrong, I don't feel well, and this pain, I'm not going to be able to make it through the night. So I get up to the emergency room. My husband has to go to work that night. So it's not like that big of an issue or problem. Like I'm just going to the emergency room <laughs> just because I, you know, it's something simple I can handle on my own. So he still gets up and goes to work while I'm at the emergency room. I get to the emergency room. They are quick. They are so nice. They are so efficient. They are so friendly. She goes ahead and she gives me medicine. She confirms I have indeed cracked my wisdom tooth. She 
further that statement has been letting me know that yeah you're gonna have to go see an oral surgeon for this but if anything happens if the pain gets worse or blah 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 after the pres prescription she gives me to carry me through the weekend until Monday when I can go see a surgeon I'll have to come back up to the hospital and I was like okay fine cool whatever I totally get it so I leave the hospital the staff was so nice like they were that was the nicest I've ever seen a hospital staff be to be honest with you guys I didn't know they could be quite that nice but she was super nice her staff was super nice I get over to Walgreens literally we have 24 hour Walgreens and pharmacies but the one I went to which is the closest to my house they were closing in like 45 minutes and she told me she would need an hour to fill my prescription so I would be able to come pick it up the next morning. And I explained to her what happened. And she said, if you're willing to sit here and wait on it, I could probably get it tonight before we actually close. I just have other prescriptions of herbivores that I have to fill first. And I'm like, okay, fine, cool, girl. I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to sit right here. I'm going to chew on these goodies until this uh, pill they gave me in the hospital kicks in and helps me with the actual pain. It's not that big of a deal. I can wait. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I get my prescription filled, then I go home. I'm feeling a whole lot better, so I canceled the appointment to get a uh, prescription from the other doctor. And that's Saturday morning. So, I had already made an appointment to see a doctor Monday afternoon, right? And his staff calls and confirms, hey, you're going to meet us at the office. We're going to go ahead and do x-rays. We're going to look at it. We're going to confirm exactly what happened so we know your plan of treatment. Or so I thought. So I get to the office and everything, and I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my brows using the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Concealer. And this is in the shade Golden Honey. And I'm using my Tarte brush that I normally use to clean it up. So <laughs> I get to the office Monday morning, still in pain, you know, a little swelling, but not a lot, but just, you know, still in pain or whatever, how that goes. And the doctor sees me, they do the x rays, and he's like, okay. So, the doctor's office that I went to, that I chose to go to, his doctor's office is right in front of one of the hospitals here in my county. So he was like, you're gonna drive down to the ER, I'm gonna meet you at the ER, and we're gonna go ahead and assess the situation from there. I was like, uh, okay, you know, whatever. You know, me, silly butt, not really realizing the seriousness of the cracked wisdom tooth and the reason why most doctors if they aren't oral surgeons will refer you over to an oral surgeon even though it's a simple thing to fix but sometimes you can get in there with the wisdom tooth and depending on what happened where the nerve is how the tooth is growing and how the bone is growing around it you're going to need an oral surgeon to go ahead and make adjustments while he's in your mouth and a regular dentist cannot do that so that's the reason why they now refer everybody over to an oral surgeon when it comes to anything, you know, surrounding your actual wisdom teeth, if it's not just a simple extraction or anything like that. Um, so I'm like, okay, fine, cool, whatever. I'm a big girl. I can handle this. It's not that big of an issue. Okay. So I'm still not thinking too much of it. So I still don't even say anything to my husband as I drive over to the hospital. I'm like, okay, fine, cool, whatever. Uh, this is just a, gonna be a big bill for you to pull a tooth out. So I'm thinking. I get over to the hospital, long story short, he does it. Well, it should have been 15 minutes, winds up being way longer than that. That should have been my first clue that something was wrong. Um, go ahead and he furthers the process. You know, I'm out a little bit. And he goes in and he removes the cracked wisdom tooth. But the way my roots are growing and the way my bone has fused with those roots, he had to slightly crack my upper mandible. I kept saying jaw. Obviously, this is your jaw bone. The upper mandible, he had to slightly crack it. And from there, he was able to get the tooth out. But in order to get the tooth out, he had to take part of the bone with it. So he didn't completely fracture or break my upper mandible. It's a small fracture he had to do as he was getting the tooth and the bone that was surrounding the tooth. He took just a very small, thin layer of that out. So all of this is happening that Monday before I'm scheduled to leave for my Miami Key West vacation. The following Monday, uh, the 15th, I'm sorry, this was the Monday prior to April 15th. So what was that, April 7th or something like that, April 8th? 
is when this oral surgery surgery is happening. And I'm like, okay, not a big deal, not a problem or anything like that. You know, I'm a housewife. So I'm like, I'll just stay around the house and just recuperate. And he did go ahead and let me know that, you know, the anesthesia that he gave me, the medicine he gave me is going to wear off pretty soon. So I definitely want to go ahead and get my pain pills taken care of. And he said, the biggest pain I'm going to have isn't going to be coming from the tooth. It's going to be coming from my actual upper mandible, the actual bone itself, healing and settling back into place. And he did tell me it's going to be a bloody mess for the first few hours. When I get home, so, you know, he gave me the whole God's packing package, blah, 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 blah. You guys get it. If you've ever had to go to the um, doctor's office like that. So, I'm like, okay, fine, cool, whatever, you know. I'm not new to this. I totally understand. I'm using my Morphe E15 to go ahead and blend this out. So, I get over, I get my prescription filled, and I get home, and I take my medicine. You know, the pain is starting to re-come back like stronger than when I had actually cracked my tooth and that is what surprised me that the pain was worse than the pain before he even went in and did my surgery so I'm freaking out my mouth won't stop bleeding again you know at this point I'm just freaking out my husband is at work I'm at home with the kids and I'm just freaking out completely freaking out probably a little unnecessary but I'm freaking out fast forward I wind up calling him, letting him know, hey, there's a problem. It won't stop bleeding. I went ahead and did the tea bag. I went ahead and switched out the gauze. You know, what's going on? You know, he did tell me it will still continue to bleed, but I'm sitting up there freaking out thinking like, oh my God, I'm going to bleed to death. So he has me drive back to him. And at this point, it is like 4.50 Monday afternoon here in Metro Atlanta. And we have the worst traffic, the worst traffic, right? So his daughter's his office closes at five. His him and his staff stayed until five thirty because I was about twenty minutes drive away, but with traffic and plus it was raining, it took me about thirty five minutes to get there. So I got there about five thirty ish, and he stayed and he looked at it. And he said everything is normal, everything is fine, but just remember tomorrow is going to be one of your worst days. Tuesday is going to be the worst day before it starts to turn around on Wednesday. The video that I showed you guys is the swelling that happened. <laughs> on Tuesday I woke up the pain wasn't there like that but the swelling and the pressure was and I was like holy shit there is absolutely no way I'm leaving the house there's absolutely no way I'm filming there's no way I'm doing anything like at this point I just want to adjust the situation because what it looked like was when you see the video what it looked like is I look like I was swollen <laughs> and had a slight stroke because this part of my face was pulled down and out from the actual swelling that happened. And it happened like swelling from here back here. So this eye was kind of drooping down like this. This part of my mouth was turned really down like this. So no matter what I was doing, even when I was talking, this side of my face wasn't moving, but this side was. Fast forward to Wednesday. The swelling starts to go down. The pain really starts to dissipate. Things start to get better. You know, so I thought. Keyword is, so I thought. So, as this is happening and this is going on, I'm like, you know, I'm a big girl. I can handle this. This isn't any problems or issues. I'm going to go ahead and start my eyeshadow. I'm using the Christmas Morning Palette from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. And you guys already know what it looks like. Such a beautiful palette. I'm going to go ahead and go into Milk and Cookies through my crease. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and set down my brow bone with my Kat Von D palette and I'm gonna go ahead and use this shade mixed with this shade to set it down. So, as I'm busy going through this whole process of trying to heal from the surgery and the swelling and everything, this is what really comes into play for me. Um, looking at my face and the swelling and the fact that different parts of my face weren't moving when I was talking and doing different things, I'm thinking that's what really started to play on my insecurities. I knew I would had a trip to get ready to go to Miami in less than seven days. And my doctor wanted me to come back so he can take out my stitches on that Tuesday. But we were leaving for our Miami trip that Monday. So he said he couldn't wait until I got back in town from my Miami trip to deal with the actual stitches. Because he doesn't want to leave... Uh, situation like that with my mouth open for that long and only really needed a week seven or eight days to get to the point of where he could take the stitches out 
So I'm like, well, we're going to have to do this Monday because I'm not waiting till Tuesday to leave on my trip unnecessarily if I don't have to. I'm going to lose money because everything is already booked and paid for and set up for us to go ahead and leave town that Monday. So fast forward, I'm having a really crappy week. I try to film. That goes horribly wrong. I can't do anything uh, along that nature. I go ahead and pack at the last minute on Monday morning because at this point, I'm just taking my medicines and sleeping, not feeling well. I'm starting to slip, slip into depression at this point. Um, if you're used to seeing your face and everything be a certain type of way, and something happens, whether you have a scar, you have a cut, you have a car accident, you have a stroke, or you have a medical emergency like I did or anything, and it, <laughs> it alters the figuration of your face. For a woman, it definitely paid on my security. So I, I started to slip into, uh, is I was depressed. There's no other way to put that. I was definitely depressed. I didn't want to look at myself in the mirror. I would wash my face. I wouldn't look up in the mirror. You know, I would be in the bed all the time. You know, my kids knew I wasn't feeling well. My husband knew I wasn't feeling well. And he never once said anything about, you know, the swelling and the way it was looking or my children. They was like, okay, so you had an issue. You had a problem. You got it fixed. This is part of the healing process. Like, they was like, oh, my God, you're so stupid. <laughs> you know, they didn't say that. But you could tell they was like, oh, my God. It's just the healing process. You'll get better. But the thing about the healing process... <laughs> It doesn't matter what everybody else thinks it says. It's how you see it and how you view. I'm going to go ahead and take a Morphe E23. And I'm going back into my Christmas morning palette. I'm going into my milk and cookies. And I'm just going to put this all throughout my crease. It is, if you guys can see that, it is a very loose type powder. Pressed powder for the eyeshadow. But I know it's very pigmented from using her eyeshadow sprayer. Anyway, back to my store. So, I knew I should have went ahead and packed this some other crap I should have did long before I hit the road. <laughs> but I was too busy laying in my room, holed away in my room, being depressed. Uh, my cat would come in the room and check on me for some odd reason. When I'm not feeling well or if something is happening and going on with me, my cat senses that. And she'll come lay with me. And so, I was just sitting there laying with my cat, watching TV, watching YouTube, Netflix, you know, ordering movies, Postmates, and stuff like that because I didn't feel like it. And, you know, at this point, everybody in my house is pretty much grown. So, they're all self-sufficient anyway. So, it wasn't like they were waiting on me to come downstairs and cook dinner. I have grown children. <laughs> Two 16-year-olds and an 18-year-old, but they're grown. <laughs> they have already started cooking their dinner a long time ago. So, that isn't something I have to worry about doing. So, anyway, back to just being depressed in my room and I kept thinking like do I want to go to Miami I was just going to Miami with my husband um it was really his staycation I had planned it a couple of months prior for us to, because he works so much all the time you know to take care of the family I just wanted him to have a you know a really nice vacation with not too much plan we were just going to go see family to be honest with you not even friends or anything like that that trip was just for me to see my family in miami and my family down in the keys so it was just supposed to be four days three nights but i was super depressed you know the swelling in my face had started to go down but the problem with the swelling going down the muscle movement haven't returned yet so this was still kind of downturned a little bit this eye was still kind of like that just a little bit while this swelling had started to go down. I already have big puffy cheeks anyway. But as I was talking, this side of my face would move. I would smile and this side of my face with no movement. And it was obvious even when I said a word or even when I smiled, there was no movement. So on my Instagram, you guys will probably see that I didn't post any <laughs> makeup pictures. I didn't post any close-up pictures or anything like that because, again, I was depressed and I had a huge insecurity problem with this side of my face being slightly dis temporarily disfigured as I was going through the healing process. Um, I will say I thank God that happened prior to my Miami trip because it forced me to get out of the hotel every day. Um, I went to the beach every day. I went and saw my family. We went out. We did stuff. It forced me to not just sink further into that depression and look at my face and feel even worse. You know what I'm saying? I would be out and about smiling, talking, never realizing that this side of my face is moving and this side has completely 
this portion just wasn't moving. But I wasn't thinking about that because I was out with my family. I was out at the beach. We uh, extended our trip to be seven days, six nights. So we spent five days in Miami and two days in the Keys. I drove down to the Keys to see the other part of my actual family. And I'm happy that I was able to see my family in Miami and the Keys because they really, really, really made me feel better. They really, really gave me a jump start. So by the time I made it back to Atlanta, I'm thinking like, this is April. We got back on the 23rd, 24th. We got back on the 24th. The 23rd or the 24th. We got back that following Monday here in Atlanta. You know, I was feeling better. I was like, you know, I can do this, you know. I'm gonna use my Luxie 229. This is a tapered blending brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and go into Cozy Fire out here in the edges to deepen up the edges. So when I get back into Atlanta, you know, my face is a little bit better. And I'm like, okay, fine, cool. I can get back to my filming schedule. I may be able to start filming. You know, things will get better. You know, they always do. Thank God. No. No, I had to go back into the doctor. He took the stitches out and he put like this little plate thing there to kind of make sure that I'm not bumping and moving around or having a violent sleep or whatever it may be. He didn't want anything to create, to put stress on the fracture in my upper mandible so it would actually completely break. So he just put a brace up there just to make sure, you know, I wouldn't further injure the situation or further make the situation any worse, which, you know, I'm understanding about, but <laughs> it puffed and poked out my cheek again. So the swelling had gone down, but with him going in and taking the stitches out and putting the brace in until, you know, it kind of fused a little bit more to his liking, it started to swell again. And I'm just like, oh God, here we come again. So fast forward. You know, he's able to take that out. We're able to go ahead and get all the stitches and everything out. And everything seems fine and cool, which is why I went ahead and posted on my Instagram this past Sunday that I was back. I had to have this emergency surgery. It sucked balls. It sucked complete balls. But I'm happy that, you know, everything, well, I didn't have any other further complications and everything is fine and okay. So, um, the one thing I will say about having to go through that situation is... One, I'm happy that my family and friends are so supportive. You know, when my uncle found out I had surgery, he was just like, man, why didn't anybody tell me? Why didn't I know? And I'm like, I didn't really think it was that big of a deal <laughs> going in. Otherwise, I would have made my husband call out of work and he would have been there with me at the hospital, period. You know what I'm saying? I'm just thinking like, I've had dental procedures done before. I'm like, you don't need anybody holding your hand doing the dental procedure? <laughs> Stupid me. But um, I'm very happy that, you know, I had the support of my family and friends there to assist. But moving on from that story, now that everything is back to normal and I actually look normal, now I'm going to go ahead and go into the Cat Mundi and I'm going to go tip into the black just a little bit, just to deepen up the outer V just a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. Right here. And I still want to pin too much down. But I'm just going to diffuse this out so this part can be deepened just a little bit. So getting back into the what's happening and what's going on in the beauty industry and what has most people going, oh God, what the heck is going on now? <laughs> Let's go ahead and talk about the whole James Charles, Tati, Westbrook, Jeffree Star, them not being friends after he got sponsored by Sugar Bear Hair. And, you know, Tati has the Halo Beauty. I'm like, girl, no one cares. It's not it's not that serious. You cannot... I, I didn't like the fact that some people were saying she was being overdramatic. Tati it doesn't seem to be a dramatic person, even though I don't follow her anymore for specific reasons. It's something that happened a while back that I just started to see a pattern happen. And I was just like, nah, I'm good. I can't be here with this. But I'll still check in and watch certain videos from time to time. But I thought it was just completely wrong and weird that people were trying to tell her how to respond to a crisis situation that she's having to deal with. Like, who are you to tell somebody how they should respond and act in a situation to a situation that doesn't involve you, 
You don't know the whole story, nor do you have the backstory, nor do you know what may have happened and led up to that, which may have been her breaking point. You know what I'm saying? So I really hated the fact, okay, that eye looks a whole lot better. So let's go ahead and add just a little bit more black on this one. So I really hated the fact that people felt the need to insert themselves in that process, even though they brought it to social media. But I'm like, I don't think it's right for you guys to sit here and try to tell her how she should react to feeling a certain way with someone she thought was a friend or whatever the situation may be. And for the longest, I was like, she could be talking about James Charles or she could just be talking about something totally in, totally separate that kind of touched on the whole James Charles situation. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use the Jessive 233. This is a cream shader brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and go into this shade right here. It's called Stocking Stuffers, and I'm gonna go into it dry. I'm not gonna wet it. And I'm just gonna place it right here. I'm just going in and putting the gold on the other side. I'm not sure where it actually cut off for you guys. But all I did was wet the, the color pajamas with my e.l.f. misting set so it can go on a little bit more foil. And all I do is just simply just turn the brush around to blend them in together. But anyway, with the whole James Charles situation, after you go from the whole Tati Sugar Bear Coachella little incident situation, then you have the whole Gabe situation popping up and popping on. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, this boy cannot catch a break to save his soul. Like he just, it's gotta be a different route. You need to find it and take it <laughs> because they are not playing with you. So after that whole situation happened, you're thinking like, okay, he would just sit down, calm down somewhere, leave it alone. Then you had the whole tour situation happen with the ticket prices. And the only reason why I even paid attention to that buffoonery is because of the fact that his demographic is between 9 and 16 for the most part. Of course, you do have other people that follow and pay attention to him. But the key part of his demographic is very young. They either don't work as is or they're relying on their parents to go ahead and give them certain things so they can afford to do certain things. You know what I'm saying? So you put up ticket prices at that price. They're going to sit there and bother their parents who ultimately have to be the ones winding up paying for their experience to actually come see you. And I just thought that was just a little insensitive and crazy, you know, personally. I'm taking a makeup move, removal right and removing the concealer that I had when I cleaned up my eyebrows. So I can get ready to go in and add a little something extra to this actual crease. But back to like what I was saying, you know, the ticket prices he was charging, I'm like, I'm grown, I'm over the age of 30, and I only pay $500 to go see Beyonce. Like child please but at the end of the day i do agree with one of the drama channels regardless of what he did and how much he charged for his fans it was still up to them to actually pay that price and you've seen the videos coming out lately of his performance singing and everything at the actual event and honey child honey child please i'd have been like what the deuce did i just sign up for what is happening and what is going on but you know <coughs> it is excuse me but, you know, it is really up to the parents to decide, you know, whether or not that's something, you know, they feel is okay for their children. I can't tell you what to do with your children or what to spend for your children. I do know you're setting them up for an unrealistic lifestyle. When they get a little older, they're going to be in for a huge surprise. But, hey, those are your children. If you like it. Baby, I love it. I ain't got nothing to do with that. But this next thing that's coming that I wanted to talk about, the James Charles situation, when they say he's canceled and he's losing subscribers and all this other stuff. And I'm like, the boy will do something. He'll, res he'll come back. He'll resound. You know, the whole Met Gala thing. Don't ch chick. You don't, you can't really pick your outfit. And it's really what the designer decides for the whole theme of camp this year, which I thought was stunningly beautiful. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going into Santa Slay, this one right here, and just going in on that brush and just going over the very top part of it to add just a little bit more dimension to the actual look. So this is what it looks like with the silver outline on the actual top. 
the gold right here, the red right here, and the darker matte red and black right here mixed through the crease. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so back to like what I was saying. So yeah, the Jane whole Jane Charles situation, I'm mm, girl, I'd be like, there has got to be more you can do with your time and energy besides that whole bull crap. Like I'm just like, I cannot. But a situation happened yesterday that I was just looking at on the news like, wow, this whole H3, H3, Trisha Paytas situation. I watched H3, H3's video. Um, I first found out about him when he did the Sea Monsters of the Mugbang community. That video was hilarious. Uh, look, ill-advised that he didn't do any research behind it for the most part, and it showed, but it was still hilarious. But the one he put up, what was it, yesterday, day before yesterday? The H3 um, video where he was talking about reality versus Instagram and how it hurts uh, young women and how they see themselves and the self-esteem issues that they may have. I thought he was spot on with that one. He even poked and made fun at himself, but he showed you the edited pictures that go up on social media versus what that person looks like in real life, <laughs> literally moments later in the same outfit in the same setting or within the same day it shows you exactly you know the reality of what people truly look like and i thought that was a really great idea but here comes trisha paytas in her feelings not even understanding the message and what he was trying to say with the message is you should not base your ideas and opinions on how you see yourself or how you gonna allow yourself to be seen or judged based strictly off of what you see on social media because in all honesty, they don't look like that in real life. That isn't even them without the editing and filters. And he was more or less speaking to younger people, not people, you know, in their late 20s and 30s, although some people in their late 20s and 30s, you know, they still may have you know, slight issues as far as body image. And I totally get and understand that. But he wasn't necessarily talking to us. He was more or less talking to the younger men and women who find it so hard to keep up with the standard of beauty of what your body should look like and different things like that just from looking at social media. And I thought it was a well-timed and well-needed piece Especially since, you know, you're starting to see more and more people having surgery to look a certain way. More and more people going out of the country to have these surgeries to look a certain way. Especially since we're coming into the actual summertime where, mm, for the most part, you're going to be able to really show off and see your body a whole lot more than you would if you were in the wintertime, fall time. So I thought that was a really great piece. I think Trisha Paytas and her whole response missed the point, which is once again, the reason why Trisha Paytas is Trisha Paytas. Um, not a fan, <laughs> don't really follow her like that, but just like, you know, James Charles, they can't seem to find, they, they can't seem to not find drama. And I'm like, I don't understand why you guys just can't seem to just, ah, I don't get it. I'm using a makeup wipe to clean up all of that fallout that happened. And we're going to go ahead and do the face together. But, yeah, I was like, this is crazy. The whole situation was just crazy to me. And, you know, after that, as I'm sitting there watching, you know, all of this other stuff play out and happen, you know, the whole Jake Paul situation happened at his party, you know, with uh, some of the guests getting into it. And then, you know, the young lady saying, hey, something else happened. They were touched. They were, you know might have been drunk and possibly raped and different things like that it's still an ongoing story and situation and i'm just like it was at designer's birthday um party that he threw for him and i'm just like totally get that need to you know want to be in that area to be around those stars and party like that but at the same time I'm just more or less like, it's got to be something different. It's got to be a different way for you to go out and enjoy yourself without the thoughts of something like that happening. Okay, so I'm going to be using my L'Oreal True Match. And this is a super blendable makeup. And it has SPO 17 for sunscreen, which really isn't going to help. But it, whatever. This is a cool one. And I got Nut Brown C7. Hopefully this matches with my actual tan that I have now. We are about to find out the hard way. 
But I'll just take, since it doesn't have a pump, and I haven't went and bought a Mac pump yet for it, I'll take and dump the way too much, clearly, obviously, but a generous amount out, and yeah. That is not going to work. So I'm gonna take and mix in some of my Dior backstage. This is the Stage 5 WP. Now that I'm tanned, some of these shades just don't work too well for me anymore. So I gotta mix in the darker shade with the lighter shade. I will go ahead and put the lighter shade around, you know, the more lighter parts of my face. Let's go ahead and mix this in and see if this works. I'm just mixing it on the back of my hand so I can go in here. Okay, that's gonna be a little bit better. But moving on, you know, overall, my thoughts and opinions are just that these aren't facts or anything. This is just me reacting to what I'm hearing and seeing go on on social media and different platforms. And I wish it would stop because it's just, it definitely is affecting those people who constantly watch you are at a young, impressionable age. And that is the part and thing that I don't like. You have so many young people who watch and pay attention to it now to where it just becomes, um, for lack of a better word, it just becomes toxic. And that is the reason why I definitely feel like from time to time, it is a really great idea for people to go ahead and take a break from social media. I'm gonna go ahead and use my J1 Round Top Foundation Brush, and this is from Juvia's Place. And of course, I'm gonna go ahead and just wet the brush just a little bit. It helps with blending. And because this foundation does dry fast, I should have been moving a whole lot faster than this instead of ruining my mouth like I'm crazy, but anyway. So, I just think that, you know, some of the issues and problems that happen and arise, not necessarily for older people, although other older people do have insecurity problems and issues and things do happen. So it, you do have to check in on people who are 30 plus, 40 plus, 50 plus, because insecurity, depression, and different things like that can happen and set in at any age. But more or less, especially for our younger people, I think it is healthy for them to kind of take a break from time to time from social media. So this way, they don't get so skewed in the actual process of social media, feeling like, hey, they have to be this certain type of way. They have to live here, they have to drive this, they have to dress like this. You know, uh, it kind of gets a little bit more difficult when you're a younger person assimilating into the world and still trying to keep up with what's happening in the world. You know, who, who's doing this? Who's driving this? Who's wearing this? I think that's very important. And that leads me into my actual next topic. <laughs> this whole little, you know, completely off topic, you know, kind of, sort of, not really. This whole situation that happened at Chris Brown house with the lady who said her child was underneath the voodoo curse. So the whole night of the Jake Paul party, she had went to Chris Brown house and she was throwing like Bibles and stuff into his yard, you know, wanting him to lift the curse she had, he had on her child. Whole time, Chris Brown is down the street around the corner at Jake Paul's house having the time of his life. Never knowing, never the wiser, knowing that, you know, somebody's at his house throwing Bibles across his yard and lawn like that. And I'm just like, what is going on? What is happening? <laughs> How did we get here? Okay, so now that I have that done and situated out of the way, now I'm going to go ahead and go in with my concealer. This is the Kevin Aquan. This is the, his Supernatural Concealer, and this is in the shade Medium. EC06 and we're gonna go ahead and just go in right here just a little bit not too much I just want to bring just a little bit of light right here and I'm gonna use my Sigma F87 and again I'm gonna go ahead and wet this down and I'm gonna go ahead and blend this out it is a beautiful concealer when I'm using a gripping primer underneath, I do realize that it makes my foundations and concealers dry a whole lot quicker. So the playtime when I'm using these type of products isn't necessarily that fast. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my Koki Cosmetics. This is a 618, this is a foundation brush. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into my Ben Nye 
powder mix that I have. This is a little bit of banana translucent and topaz. And I'm gonna go ahead and go under here and set this down before we have the chance to crease. But the next thing I wanted to go ahead and talk about with you guys while I've been gone is, next thing I wanna go ahead and talk to you guys about is this whole Kim K situation and how she is working with a minority owned um, nonprofit to go ahead and free the inmates who've been convicted of non-violent offenses. And I really think that's a really great thing. You know, the fact that she wants to go ahead and throw her weight and her name behind that situation, the fact that she is taking this whole situation seriously, or so it seems, to be able to go ahead and help these people, I'm all for that. Anytime anybody can go in and help right a wrong for a situation like that, I'm all here for it. I am not the one that's going to bash her or say anything like that because if it was my family member, my loved one, or anything like that, I would hope and pray that someone would be able to come along in a situation like that from where we haven't been able to see results starting out. And I love using my Koki brush to go ahead and just go ahead and set down my entire face with that actual powder because it really holds powder and really goes in even though I look like that little meme of the little boy who painted his face white. Don't I look like that right now? <laughs> so that's with the lighter color and this is the deeper color that I'll go in with and this is like kind of like a topaz type of color. It's a deep brownie type color. And I'll go in and just go ahead and press this on into the skin. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and go back and go ahead and get the actual powder out of my brows. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my Milani Stay Put Brow Shaping Gel. And this is in the shade Dark Brown 05. I'm gonna go ahead and use this to go ahead and set it down. And then also go ahead and clean up all of that powder out of my brows. I don't know how much I like this one. Doesn't put a whole lot of product on the actual brush. I'm not really, I don't like that. I'm not a fan of that. So I'm gonna go in with my Anastasia Dip Brow Gel and this is in the shade Granite and go over that just a little bit. Going over it with the Dip Brow Gel just worked a little bit better for me with the way that I like to have my brows and everything look. If you can get it before it dries, you can go in and try to clean that up just a little bit. So now that I have that done, now I'm gonna go back in with my same Koki brush and I'm gonna go into my BH Studio Pro. This is in the shade 255 and this is their matte finish press powder. Now I'll go in and use this to go ahead and start to bring color back to my skin. And buff in all of that powder and brush away the excess powder. And I'll go ahead and go into my CoverGirl Queen. This is the shade Ebony Bronze. And I'll go ahead and take my Juvia's J121 Angle Contour Brush. And I'll go ahead and use this to go in and deepen up the cheeks and add a little bit more structure back to my face. But yeah. So that's pretty much what's been going on with me. Just keeping up with what in the heck is happening on happening in world news and everything like that. Speaking of world news, I was watching the Philip DeFranco show yesterday when he was talking about Kim K and different things. And he was saying there's such thing as net result. Like if you take what the person previously did, what they're currently doing, on the other side of that equal sign, does it equal a positive outcome? Is it a positive outcome and a positive experience? He was like, if so, then what they may have previously done, her sex tapes, marrying different people, being with different people, blah, 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 blah. If the outcome on the other side of that equal sign is a positive situation, then that negates all of that. And I'm like, to a certain degree, yes. I can agree with you, and to a certain degree, uh, no. There are situations and times where whatever happened on this side of the equal sign outweighs 
the equal net results of when you add those integers together. For instance, the whole Kim K situation with her being enlightened now, this is something that she's been doing. If mm, I know most of you guys are like, oh, pay attention to the Kim Kardashian, to the Kardashians of the world, and but you can't open social media and turn on your social media without seeing something in reference to them. So if you have actually been paying attention to the news and different things that's been happening, Kim, for the past uh, good year and a half, ever since, even before she went to the White House, she has literally been on a roll with just making sure that um, certain things happen. You can tell the change in her with her whole demeanor and personality. Uh, with social media, she's really slowed down on certain posts that she would normally post on a regular. Those have really slowed down, and I've noticed that she's become more family-oriented and more starting to look a little bit more like her dad in reference to how he lived and ran his life and I'm here for it. You know, no matter how long it takes you to level up and get to a different, better position in life, I'm happy that that change is happening and coming, especially for her with everything that she's gone through and everything that she's been through. I'm gonna go ahead and add blush now. And these are, these are my City Color Cosmetic Blushes. I'll have to leave, I'll have to find out what color it is online and leave it for you guys. But using the same brush, because I hate dirty brushes, I'm going to go ahead and take some of this blush and go right here on the cheeks. And I like to go across my nose just to still have that sun tan, sun effect with my actual nose. And now I'll go ahead and pull into a highlighter. Which highlighter do I want to use? I'm going to go ahead and go into the Fenty Beauty. This is the Kilowatt Foil Highlighter. And I'm going to go into the shade um, Copper Nice right here on the bottom. And I'm going to be using a J221 Small Complexion Brush to go in and apply this highlighter. And we're going to go ahead and do lashes. I'm going to go ahead and use my Coco Lashes. And this is in the style Venus. And of course, you guys already knew, I'm going to use my House of Lashes Lash Glue. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and do my actual eyeliner for my actual eyes. Pull you guys in just a little bit closer. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a pretty thin line down here with this. But yeah, that's been going on with me for the most part in a nutshell, to be completely honest with you. Getting over the whole medical emergency situation and the insecurity and the shyness of not wanting to be around anybody, not wanting to talk to anybody. I didn't want to be around family, friends, nobody when that situation first happened. I just really wanted to be left alone. And again, I'm so happy for the trip to Miami because it allowed me to not just sit and sulk. It forced me to get up and go out every day and interact and do stuff and not just be lost in the moment. And then a lot of times, when you're going through a situation like that, being lost in the moment can actually make it worse. If you're just sitting there sulking, not getting out, doing stuff, seeing other stuff. And that is depression. Depression will have you in the house. Uh, for whatever reason, if you're insecure, if it's something you battle and deal with, or if a situation happens, even though it's temporary, that is exactly what depression will do. Depression will have you sit in your house, in your room, not really wanting to come out, not really wanting to do anything. Okay, I clearly went a little too wide on this side. And just like that, my eyeliner is about to take on a mind of its own. And because I'm feeling just a little fruity colory, I'm going to go ahead and go into the shade Theory. And this is the LA Girl Shockwave, Shockwave Neon Lips and Liner. And I'm going to use this in my actual waterline. I always get it started on the back of my hand and warm up the product before I actually go in and put it in my waterline. And that's what it looks like. Okay, so now I'm going to take a dust of 237. This is a detail shader brush. And I will go ahead and wet this brush. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and reach back into the Christmas Morning palette by giving me Glow Cosmetics. And I'm going to go ahead and go back into Santa's sleigh. 
And I'm gonna use that as an inner eye highlight. And I'll just take it and brown it back up to the line I had already created. And I'll go ahead and take and smudge underneath using the Cozy Fire Shade. I go in and I press first, and then I'll go in and blend. And now I'll go back in and go ahead and clean up any fallout that may have happened. And I'll go ahead and put down the first layer of the Smashbox Primer Water before I go in with my actual lashes. And I'll just go back up with my brush after I wiped it down. And I'll just go ahead and pounce everything down and in. So I'm able to go ahead and assess my face and see if I need to add or do anything, and I do. I'm gonna go ahead and add more of the highlighter. And I'll go ahead and go back over that just to blend that out just a little bit. So it's not too strong of a highlighter. Oh, it's, it's, it's popping. Any Rihanna highlighter is definitely gonna be a popping highlighter. But I just use this just to diffuse it out. So when I get ready to go in and spray my last layer of setting spray, it'll actually mesh in a whole lot better. And you guys know I like dark tails. So I'm just using my eyeliner, the same one that I use on my actual, oops, there yeah, I go making a mistake. The same one that I use my eyeliner with, and I'm going back into the same brush that I did the silver with. I'm lying. I'm going back into the same brush that I cleaned up my concealer with, and I'm just dragging that through so it's not an obvious harsh line there. But it helps darken in and fills in my tails a whole lot better. So now I'm going to use my Ulta Beauty Limitless Mascara to go ahead and put a little bit of mascara on my top lashes. And now I'll go ahead and go in with my actual eyelashes and put those on. Okay, so now that we have the eyelashes done with the actual look, now I'm gonna go ahead and do the bottom eyelashes. I use the Ulta Beauty Limitless Lashes, and now I'll go ahead and go back on top of that with my Bad Girl Bang by Benefit Cosmetics. And now that we have the face actually done, I'm just gonna go in and get ready to set it down with some setting spray. Um, but before I do that, I'm gonna allow my mascara to dry down just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and put my mold back on my face because with foundation and stuff, I'm always covering up. Go on right there that you can see underneath the foundation. And I'll just go ahead and put it back. And I'll go over that with my actual foundation brush with any product that's left on it. To make it seem more realistic, and then I'll go ahead and go in with the powder brush and completely set that down so it comes back to being a real mole on my face. And now I'll go ahead and take off my lip balm. I'm gonna try to keep this look as natural and normal as possible. And I say that really crazy. No. I'm gonna go ahead and throw two colors together that may or may not work. It's probably finna go to hell in a hand basket from here. What we about to see. Sometimes you never know what will or won't work if you actually don't go in and experiment it. I'm going to use two Ultra Satin Lips from ColourPop. Uh, the base shade I'm going to use is in Mess Around, and the top shade that I'm going to use is in Make Believe. So I'm going to put this on as a base and this as a top. Yeah, we're going to see exactly what's going to happen with this one. And for my women of color out there, the one thing I will tell you is mess around is your perfect nude. When I say your perfect nude, girl, your perfect nude. And it is a satin lip, so it's not gonna draw dry, <laughs> dry down all weird and crazy on you. Yes, Miss Bell. Yes, he can go ahead and do a self checkout. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and do, <laughs> it looks like I'm trying out for the movie Frozen, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and take this shade, which is so pretty, and it kind of gives it like a cotton candy look, like, mm. I'm going to go ahead and put this kind of in the center a little bit, and you blot. And I'll go ahead and go back into the regular shade that I was using just to go around and clean it up a little bit more. And this type of lip is just a whole lot of back and forth. 
It's a very unusual color. It's a very unusual combination, but I thought you guys would kind of enjoy this one. Now, the final thing we'll go ahead and do, now that everything is kind of dried down a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and set the face. Now that we have that done, and it's a very unusual combination, hopefully you guys like it. You're like, when I would never wear that. <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead and set the face down with my Urban Decay All Nighter. And I'll go ahead and use my actual brush that I was using for my powders to go in and mash that into the skin and make sure everything is completely all set down. And that's what we're looking back so far. So now that I destroyed my edges, so I'm going to go ahead and change clothes and redo my edges. And I'll come back with the actual final put together look. Thank you, guys. Okay, so you've seen the whole let's talk, get ready with me about surgery and different things like that. Sound off in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. I do know I have two more huge let's talk videos coming up one of them is surrounding women's health and the other one is just surrounding the state of where we are so if you guys are ready you already know i'm about to give it to you but of course youtube i don't care when you are watching me doing your makeup looking at stuff I, i'm just happy that you came to spend some time with your girl and of course as always whenever you watch me in the morning afternoon evening late at night i just want to say thank you so much and as always youtube until next time have a good one